Hi everyone, welcome back to our series on building an ERP app or enterprise resource planning application on Bubble. In this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the most common pieces of functionality you'll find in, e in an ERP system, and that is user roles and permissions. Now this is popular because typically users who are engaging with ERPs are gonna be a part of uh, an organization, a company, a team of some kind, and there's generally gonna be some sort of hierarchy, right? Some users should be able to view uh, only, you know, certain data they can't edit, whereas others should be able to view and edit. So this video is all about managing those permissions, giving your companies custom control over what the roles are called and how they apply to functionalities that are unique to their own company. And we'll also talk about how that would just, in general, how do you enforce those, right? How does that actually apply to the rest of the app? Uh, so that's what we'll look at today. Keep in mind that there are many ways to approach the management of user roles and permissions. You can keep this super simple. You can also be much more elaborate with it, you know, with large organizations that have much more granular levels of hierarchy within their team structures. So I'll be touching on certain areas that you can keep an eye out for uh, that you can fine tune and change up to suit your needs. So if you're new around here, my name is Gabby Roman. I am the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom applications for their business and also grow and scale existing businesses all without code. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I've got an example page here to show you an approach that you can take with user rules and permission management. Look at this from the perspective of a company admin person, someone who's setting up the permissions for their organization for the first time. Uh, we've broken this down into two separate sections. So we've got the management of the roles themselves, what they're called, what the permissions are, and then the assignment of those roles to their company users. Okay, so we would start with the management. The way that I've built this out is that a user, a company admin person, can create as many roles as they want, right? So right now we have one, two, three, four, five roles. If I come up here, click on this button, it's going to add another role to the end of my list and I can name it, I can get started with configuring it, all right? So the user has the ability to give it their own name, that way it's unique to their own company. Uh, they can then link it to a type. This is a system-generated type. I've chosen to do it this way to keep things simple, but you don't have to build it out like this. And you can also give your users the control to create uh, you know, different categories, different buckets of what their roles fall under, maybe even by departments if it makes more sense to do it that way. So a, a role is going to be tied to a generic category, in our case, system admin, a company user, so you know the, the admin of the company, uh, an accountant, regular employee, versus an external user. Uh, we see that a lot with ERP systems because generally you know, we're, we're, we're anticipating that there are going to be folks who need temporary access to data um, or just limited access, so contractors right, that aren't going to be around forever, uh, clients who just need to be able to check in on the status of a project, for example. And then the user would link these roles to certain permissions. This permissions list, I've got four of them here, is also generated by the application. I'm actually using an option set for this. This is another area that you can have your users create themselves if you needed to be more granular with it. But if your application is providing that permission list, it does make things a bit easier for you on the logic side of things because then you'll know if they selected user, then we know that it is affecting user data specifically. Um, and I've also broken this down into basically two types of access. They can view the data related to these categories here, or they can view and edit. Um, we've seen in other ERP systems as well that there's usually a third um, category for deleting. Sometimes they like to separate those out uh, into their own thing. So view, view and edit versus delete. Again, it's completely up to you. This is all under your control. So for this example company here, they have an admin who has, right, they're a company user, and they have full edit access to all of the data involved in the ERP, in the ERP system. Then they have a, a, an accountant, still a company user, but they only have edit access to the billing information, right? So they can create invoices, uh, they can change the status of an invoice, mark it as paid, things like that, and they can view project information, but they have nothing to do with, uh, you know, creating tasks within a project. They can't assign things. They can't create new projects. They really just have view access to see what the status of the project is, so they can then generate an invoice, for example, right? Next user uh, role that we have here, client. This is an external user. They can't edit anything, but they can see project information that is related to them, task information that's related to them, and so on, right? So we've got regular employees, contractors, another external user, and any other roles we want to add there. 
uh, we have this little drop down in the upper right corner where as an admin person, if my organization is very large and I, I need to look something up quickly, I can filter, right? So if I wanted to see all of the roles related to the external user, then it'll filter it down and only show me those two, my client role and then my contractor role, okay? This filter is also gonna carry over to my second section here. Um, these are my only two users who are type external user. Okay, and if I go to, let's say, company user, then these are only my company users, and I can also deselect, and I see everybody here shared, okay? Uh, now, what the way that this works is we have, of course, in, in identifying information for the user, we're tying that user to a general type. Okay, so Phoebe here is a company user, and therefore, Phoebe has the, we, have, we can only assign a company user type of role to Phoebe. So this is filtered so that we don't get confused, we don't cross wires, we don't see um, a system admin or external user roles here. Phoebe's a company user, we can only do these for her. Um, if I switch this over to, let's say, external user, you see these are now the ones that apply uh, to that type and I can say, okay, she's a, let's see, oops, something's disabled there. All right, well, we would select one and it would assign it to her, okay? And so the company admin would go through every single user and select one for that user. And this is the piece that really brings everything together and allows you to create the permissions to give or restrict access in your workflow logic, in your design logic, your front end UI. Whatever role the user has, that will dictate what they can do, what they can see. Okay. So this is an example interface for the management of all this. Now I'm gonna take you into the back end in the editor uh, to show you the data structure. Again, keep in mind, a lot of this can work different differently. Um, I'm making more decisions for my users, but you can give them even more control than I have here, all right? So the first thing I wanna look at are actually the option sets. I have two option sets that are related. The permissions list is one, so I have four categories of data, user data, project data, billing, tasks. I could split this up, you know, maybe into invoices, um, versus payments, if I wanted, you know, even more control over that. And then I have user type. So these are my three general categories of what, what kind of user uh, are they? System admin versus company versus external. Things like this can also help you direct your users who are logged into the system to the appropriate page in your application. You might have a UI set up for company users that's completely different from a UI, you know, a layout of the front end design from your external users. Okay, so even at the user type level, even before the role level, uh, this will give you a lot of control for just kind of branching things off and really creating a lot of conditional uh, experiences there. So we've got those two option sets. So your users don't have control over this. You can make them something that users have control over if you want it. And then we have our role data type. Let me jump over there. Here we go. Okay, so our role data type is where the company admin person will actually be able to save their own custom names uh, and link that role to a certain permission list for editing, for viewing only. Like I said before, we could have a third one for deleting. Um, of course, we need to know the company that is tied to the role. Uh, otherwise, we would see roles from all other companies. We don't want that. And then which user type this role belongs to. Uh, if we take a look at the app data, for the roles you can see here in my table format, this is the same data that we were looking at in our UI, just in a you know more of a standard spreadsheet. So every single role is gonna be tied to some company, which allows us to do some filtering and protect data between companies. And you can see all of the information here is linked in the way that we need. The final kind of piece to this and really where everything comes together is the user, right? The user, uh, after we've defined all the different types of roles, linking them to certain permissions, now the user has to be assigned a role. And once we know the user's role, like I said, everything just kind of has a ripple effect from there. You can create all the logic to customize their experience in the application. So user will have a role. They'll also have a type, um, right? They're one of these three. And of course, they're also tied to a company. That way the company admin can only look at users and work with users within their company. So this is something, like I said, that can really go in many different directions depending on the the unique needs of a company, the size of the company, the interface that you design here, again, doesn't have to work in this way, it can work a little bit differently. 
Um, but this gives your users control over naming their own things so that it works for their organization. You can add other things like tagging, color coding um, of roles. You can uh, you know, revoke roles, of course. You can have other users assign uh, permissions. It, it doesn't always have to be the, the, the company admin. Um, think about the flow that every type of user will experience as they go through and how it relates to these roles. And that will help you build out the interface. It will help you build out the data structure. Also, the uh, Bubbles privacy rules can really tap into these roles as well. In fact, if you create a system that manages roles and permissions, you've actually made it a lot easier for yourself to create privacy rules in Bubble. All right, so I hope you learned something here. I hope this was helpful. Um, we're th this is something that, you know, with different ERP systems, it's really, really important because we anticipate a team to be a part of the application. We anticipate multiple users to have access to the same data. So you want to make sure you're thinking about um, how you're separating that data if needed. Now, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified when the next video in this series is available. And happy building, everyone.